Hey everybody, Riot Mort back with Look Who's Back from Vacation. It's Riot Kent. Welcome back, Kent. How you been? I've been good. I uh, took a little break, you know, from being more dogged in my games and uh, did a little bit of traveling and, I don't know, watching a lot of TV TFT. So it, it was a good break. Well, good. Well, good. While you were gone, we obviously replaced you with Froden on the balance team. He came in, made a bunch of changes. Uh, you know, no, obviously that didn't happen, but good to have you back for this late patch rundown. We wanted to make some last minute changes, try to get the balance as good as possible, uh, especially knowing that like some of the regions, I know some regions have already done their regionals like OCE and Japan, um, but others have some big like last chance qualifiers and regionals coming up. So trying to get the balance as good as we can. Um, really focusing on things like early augments that were uh, impacting the game a little more than they should have, uh, as well as some things that skipped the front line. So front line matters a bit more. Any other big changes that we kind of highlighted? Yeah, um, we wanted to make sure that reroll comps were viable. So we buffed a bunch of three stars at the lower costs. Um, we also did some adjustments to four and five cost three stars to make sure that when you hit those high moments, um, they really do pay off. And the ones that are like a little too good, if uh, you hit them, they will pay off slightly less. So just make sure that, you know, if two people hit them, they can compete and it's like a, a fair game from there. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, then let's dive into it and talk about what's going on. And I think the first slide is going to make a lot of people happy, um, but let's dive into it. And that is adjusted the drop rates of bonus blue orbs. Now, that's a really fancy way of basically saying, and here's the part you all care about. The five gold openers are gone. Uh, blue orbs will always give six gold worth of value if they're the bonus orbs, which means all the openers are now the same. Um, so yeah, that's going to remove some of that early game variance, right, Kent? Yeah, I think the, the part where this matters the most is when you get the PvE minions on stage one. You know, you'll always get the at least six gold, depending on what kind of opener you have. Um, you'll no longer get the five gold drop. Um, so we like looked into this and basically with the addition of augments, creating a good amount of variance of two on boards, two on board strength and two on econ, um, we no longer needed this extra like five gold drop, um, to provide the variance here. Um, and you know, it, it, we saw that in rare, some rare scenarios, some specific scenarios, you could create some like snowball effects. And so we wanted to avoid that and pull back there to make sure everyone's on even playing field from two on. Yep. Cool. Uh, in addition, again, on the topic of making things that, you know, decide the game a little too much, uh, we pulled out two uh, big treasure dragon options that were a little too powerful. Uh, the order dragon had a 0.2% chance of dropping 100 gold. If you got that, it was very, very powerful. So we're lowering that to 80 gold. Should still be powerful, but less game deciding, hopefully. And then the Chaos Dragon had an Aura Items version that was a rare drop that included Zeke's Chalice, Locket, uh, and Randuin's Omen. Uh, we removed the Zeke's as that one was also overperforming a bit, so lowering the power of that as well. Yep, just small adjustments to make the um, options all fair for everybody. Yep, cool. All right, on the trait side, Cavalier. We're talking about things being a good front line. Cavalier has kind of fallen off a little bit, so buffing it at basically every level except the top. Um, so yeah, Cavaliers will be a little tankier this patch. Yep. After we pulled back some of the damage from Nunu and made the Nunu changes last patch, we're putting back some of the defensive power. So, you know, you trade a little bit of the offensive for Cavaliers being a more solid front line here. Yep. Uh, Dragonmancer. I think this is a buff people are going to be surprised to see. Um, but Dragonmancer 2 and 4 getting a buff to their AP ratio. Only 2 and 4. Kent, you want to explain this one? Yeah, we've noticed that early game Dragon Mancers um, in stage two when you get two, and then like when you're you know trying to stabilize around four, you're not as strong as um, you should be, and it's really hard to hit those rerolls and and survive long enough to get to late game to hit six Dragon Mancer with your three stars. So we're giving a little bit of offensive power here. Um, we're gonna make some adjustments to some of the units too to make sure that you know the the you can play different versions of these units or different versions of this comp and still succeed rather than just having that one specific you know Karma frontline comp um, be good. So we're going to give some power here, and we're going to adjust some of the units. Nice. All right. Guild. Guild, I think, has been kind of a long-standing, powerful trait for pretty much the whole set, uh, most recently with Guild Dejah, um, Guild Zaya before that, obviously. So we're bringing down guild power a bit here, uh, losing, less, losing attack speed from Twitch, so you'll get less total attack speed from the trait. Uh, the emblem, in particular, is losing some of that Omnivamp as well, so your team isn't just going to generally passively heal nearly as much. And then at the top at 7 and 8, we're also lowering that a little bit. Um, so not a huge nerf to guild, 
but should definitely bring it down. I think the Twitch change in particular, the attack speed for the comp, is probably the most impactful here. Yeah, the attack speed should be pretty noticeable as a nerf, especially to the guild-specific units. Um, but we really wanted to bring down the power of the emblem here. It's definitely way too good, and you can see that on the augment stats and all that kind of stuff. You know, it doesn't matter who you throw on Aushin, Shivana, Deja. It's all, like, super good. So we're bringing down the power of the um, vertical, um, and especially in the emblem. And we're going to continue to keep an eye to see if there's any of the other uh, stats that need to come down, maybe just, like, a nudge. Uh, Jade. Uh, Jade 5 has been taking over the meta, uh, especially at the highest level, um, especially around the Soyfen comp. Um, and so we're bringing this down. We didn't want to lower the Jade healing. That's kind of the primary thing that that trade is supposed to do. Uh, so we're lowering the attack speed from 30% to 22%. Uh, Jade 7 will still be a pretty big spike going up to 55 from there. Um, so hopefully if you're still tempted by Jade 7, but this should be a bit of a nerf to the five Jade comp and things like Shioyu and Soyfin a bit. Yeah, the reasoning around this is that it's super easy to hit five Jade and play around five Jade. You can play some pretty good units and hit a lot of good synergies and it's a little bit harder to commit and go full seven. And so we're keeping seven um, and um, we're keeping seven a lot stronger, um, but we're, we need to bring down five's power since it's fairly easy to hit and you get a lot of value from having two statues and the increased healing. And then finally, Ragewing, uh, if you read that long Reddit post I did a while back, uh, you, you heard me say that 8 Ragewing is basically a meme because it's, you know, you have to pay basically to play Set and Senna. Um, this is supposed to make that a little bit better. Uh, realistically, I don't think this is going to cause us to see 8 Ragewing comps at Worlds or anything like that, but it should make it a little bit less of a bait if you find yourself in a position where maybe you get like a Ragewing heart ditch the sen uh, the Senna or something and be able to play that. So should be a little bit less of a meme, hopefully. Yeah, the idea here is that like if you can get to 8 Rage Wing maybe with one of the augments, um, you should consider this. The this 85% Omni-Map is a lot, and so all of your units healing that much, um, you should be have a pretty strong comp. I, I agree with Mort. We're probably not going to see this at Worlds, but um, this is just basically to help incentivize you to like make a decision around whether or not you want to just commit to an 8 Rage Wing comp and have a bunch of attacks, a bunch of Omni-Map, a bunch of healing. Yep. Cool. Uh, on the champ side, uh, Senna gets a very minor buff here, just allowing her to get a second cast in a little more often. Honestly, I think this is going to make her pretty good unit again in Stage 2. I uh, don't think it's going to change much beyond that, but Stage 2 will be pretty good. And then in the rare event you happen to get a 3-star Senna, that spell is going to hit a little harder. Again, I don't think that this moves the needle that much, um, but it's there if you want it. Yeah, so Senna's been struggling a little bit as a unit, and so um, improving her cycle by upping her mana will, uh, buffing her mana will, should help her perform a lot better as an item holder. And then at three star, she's already kind of nuking units and like killing everything that she hits anyways. And so um, giving it a little bit of a nudge would help incentivize it, but the mana is the main buff here. Yep. All right, Zach, uh, this buff looks insane on paper. I realize that, but this also just goes to show you how little damage Zach was doing before. I think a bunch of people probably barely even realized Zach was doing damage. Don't worry, I tested this. It's not insane. We're not going to see a bunch of Zach carries or anything like that. Uh, but this should just make Zach actually feel like he's doing a little bit more to help fights. Again, it's it's not going to change anything. The main thing is Zach's primary output is still going to be healing. You put AP on him, he'll heal more. That's kind of his thing. He's the the tank that stays on the front line. But right now he like tickles everyone for like 40 damage. This yeah. makes it like 80 and then you know when you're a three star you can hit a big unit for like 300 damage. You're at least kind of like chunking them. Um, it's not going to be like game changing and you're not going to you know you can't invest in this kind of like HP but it, it hits passive damage that's um, good to help you like whittle down their front line so that your back lines can finish them off. All right, Nomzi. Uh, Mage Nomzi has been kind of dominant for a little while. I think it's fallen off a little bit this patch, but we wanted to bring some of that spell power down and hopefully buff up the other versions a little bit to make up for it. Uh, so the spell gets about a 10% nerf, uh, but then the Lulu uh, actually gets a buff to her spell. Uh, so she'll grant more attack speed, allowing you know whoever nearby to get more powerful. Uh, Tristana is also getting some base attack speed and giving more AD to Nomzi. Uh, so these should be slight buffs to the Cannoneer and Evoker version, but generally Nomzi coming down in power just a little bit. Yeah, Nomzi should be, you know, close to where she should be, but we have we're we're doing adjustments between the different um, variations, and that's it. Yep. 
Uh, Rengar getting a little bit of a chunk here. Uh, his spell is really, really impactful. Does a lot of damage every time he casts it. And, you know, even just a two-star Rengar with maybe a, drag a Dark Flight Essence or two is just chunking through some backliners here. So we're going to have him cast that spell a little bit less often. And the one and two-star are going to come down in power just a little bit. If you get the three-star Rengar, it's supposed to be a menace. It's supposed to be a monster. We want that to still be the case. But one and two star carrying you all the way to stage six, probably not where we want Rengar. So he's coming down just a bit. This is part of our skip the front line um, changes. Uh, Namzi was too, but uh, we have a bunch of units that are like making backline squishy units really hard to play. Units like Zaya. Um, you know, you can see Zaya still win some games, but she's kind of struggling right now. And you have this. These are the units that we want to bring down just slightly so that um, you know back fr backline units can have a chance to succeed again um rengar we're gonna do some adjustments to the dark flight comp um that you'll overall just see later uh, no spoilers because mort's gonna get mad at me that's but right, right. but rengar um he's just gonna get a uh you know cycle nerf and a spell 80 percent nerf he's still gonna be good he's just gonna be um a good chunk nudge down nice uh volibear i think has been a champion that has fallen below the uh the bar a little bit here uh, and so we're changing his mana a little bit to get him into that lightning strike mode quicker. Um, this should get him there, you know, two seconds quicker, give or take. He still has that long cast animation, so that's not going away. Uh, the other thing to note here is this is on top of the two and four Dragonmancer AP nerf or buff. Uh, so he should be a bit more of a menace in stage two, three, and four. I don't expect that we're going to start seeing a ton of Volibear carries in the end game or winning worlds or anything like that. But this should make it an option where, kind of like the Kaisa Shimmer Scale comp, we might see some Volibear Shimmer Scale comps early to get you to fast eight, fast nine. So, yeah, the the sad world we live in is that Volibear has to deal with some dragons and not being able to like chunk through a bunch of dragons. Yeah, that can heal yeah. is gonna be rough, but he'll still be good against like squishier comps that have a lot more units. Um, he can burn through like mages, for example. He can burn through them. Um, but you know, as an item holder at zero out of forty, and that immensely way too long cast animation this will be um it'll feel a lot better because he can get to that state a lot faster and start ramping up with rage blade and and other items yep cool uh deja again we were talking about nerfing people with access to the back line deja 2 comes down just a little bit here this is like not even it's like a five percent nerf uh and then deja 3 was one of those three stars that was really overperforming compared to everything else so Deja 3 comes down just a little bit. Honestly, that's still a big number that probably one-shots most things it hits anyway. Um, but otherwise, tiny nerf to Deja. Yeah, the most time that matters is like Dragon versus Dragon 3-star versus Dragon 3-star matchups. But yep, just tiny nudge at 3-star and 2-star. Uh, Pantheon. Pantheon, a little too tanky and too damage dealy for how tanky he is. Honestly, kind of the secret ingredient to the Soyfin comp a little bit. Uh, just doing a lot of tanky value, and so you having to get through Pantheon and uh, she, uh, Siphon and Shio all together was just a little much and doing too much damage. That being said, we want to keep Pantheon tanky for Whispers comps, so we're specifically nerfing his base damage. Now keep in mind, this base damage stacks really well with Whispers, so this will lower his damage quite a bit, actually. Um, so a bit of a nerf to that Soyfin comp. Yeah, it's a pretty significant nerf to the AP portion of his damage. Um, we want to keep him as an AD user, so he'll be better with AD than AP, but you can still use AP because, you know, he's a Whispers unit. Um, and a lot of his damage actually, or a lot of his tankiness actually comes from healing because you, you always want to put healing on Pantheon. And so um, him doing less damage will make him also slightly less tanky. Overall, like, he's just secretly doing a lot in that Soyfin comp. Um, you know, sustaining a lot and dealing a lot of damage, stacking up whispers, you know, finishing off fights, that kind of stuff. So um, we think this plus the Jade should be a pretty significant hit to the Soyfin comp. Yep. Uh, back to backliners that skip front line. Soam's just doing a lot of explosion damage, kind of deleting backlines a little too quick by himself. Uh, very small nerf, though, 5% at all levels. That's about it. Just a small nerf to Soam. Yep. Uh, Siphon, same thing. Just we wanted to lower Ragnaros's spell just a little bit here. So, oh, did I say Rag? I'm sorry, I meant Siphon. Uh, <laughs> uh, just lower his spell a little bit here, uh, so he's casting a little less often, and that'll kind of be the the final of the three nerfs to the Siphon comp here. 
Yeah, Siphon is casting just a little bit too much. So um bring that down. And especially with like, you know, he'll attack a little bit slower now with uh, the Jade statues on him. So overall, he'll be casting less in fights. Cool. Uh, Ao Shen, certainly the penultimate endgame. Uh, four dragon Ao Shen is basically as capped as you get, which is fine. He's a big expensive dragon. He's supposed to be. Uh, we just want to make it a little harder to get that big game ending cast off. Um, also opens up to a little more counterplay on things like Shroud, Mono Reeve from something like a Silas if you can get back there. Um, but otherwise, just a, a small nerf to Ao Shen's ability to cast his big game ending spell. Yeah, there there have been some fights where like Aushin can cast kind of early with some some items, um, and you know, uh, with the right setup, he's like you can't really reach him and you know kill him in time either. And so this opens it up, so he's slightly more vulnerable before he can uh, cast and like wipe your entire board. Yep. Uh, Terra is a champion that I think a lot of people are surprised to finally see on the nerf list, but it took a while for everyone to figure out how good Terra was, and it turns out Terra two with a gargoyle stone plate or two and a bloodthirster. You're not killing that anytime soon. Uh, it's just a lot of power. And again, kind of like Ao Shen, we want Terra powerful, just a little too powerful right now. So lowering that base HP. Um, so hopefully you can actually maybe have hope to ever get through the Terra before the Ao Shen casts. And maybe this brings down four dragons just a little bit so they're not quite as dominating at the end. Yeah, we want the dragon comp to still be good. We just, it's too dominant right now. And so we're teaching two of the main units in that comp. Um, Terra is one of the ones where, like, you know, if you're playing Terra from the wrong spot, Terra won't be too good as a frontline because you need items, you need, you know, um, units who can actually, like, end the fight in time when Terra buys enough time. Um, but when Terra, you play Terra from the right spot, oh my God, it's so hard to burn through the Terra. Um, and so, you know, keep in mind, Terra has 100 base armor and MR, which is. Um, gonna make this like make th this immense health pool be uh multiplied to like a lot of ehp and so we're bringing down the hp a good amount just you know the one star will take a lighter hit here but the two star should not be as tanky and you should be able to burn through um, terra eventually yep uh zoe uh zoe is another champion that i think it took a while for people to realize just how good she was and now we're seeing a lot of fights especially with things like the Soam, uh where she can just cast that kale alt twice and decide fights or a nice uh, Janna ult and get a lot of CC going. So we just want to lower that cycle just a little bit so she's not quite spamming those spells as much as she was before. Especially because, again, if she gets the Janna ult, she gets all that attack speed and gets to do it again. So again, just tiny nerf to Zoe here. Yeah, when you face a Zoe and you're just like, <laughs> Janna ult into Janna ult into Janna ult, and you just like can't move, um, she cycles pretty quickly now. Um, so, you know, we want to make sure that uh, she's still good, but uh, just a tiny nudge. And so hopefully um, she lands in a good spot where like, uh, so if she gets like Janna into Janna, you know, she'll still be casting a lot, but like uh, it feels like you can kill her in between her casts. You know, your units can move and your, your melee units aren't stuck forever. Yep. All right, Augments. Uh, Beast Den basically reads as give your team 35% attack speed and was way too strong. So we're going to be lowering a lot of the top tiers here. This goes down to 25% attack speed. So pretty sizable nerf here to Beast Den. It'll still be a good augment. It just won't be quite as game deciding. Yeah, we, we really should have made this change when we changed Beast Den to be easier to play. It's just it's too easy to play now. And, you know, like you said, it just gives your entire unit, I mean, your entire team a lot of attack speed. Yep. Uh, built different. This is one of those sad changes that will definitely be less fun because when players got this, it was very fun. But it turns out when you don't have to pay the downside of an augment and you get a second one, it's really, really good. Uh, I think the average finish for two built difference was somewhere at like 2.4 or some stupidly high number. Point is, we really don't need, you know, worlds decided by who got two built difference. So you can no longer have multiple tiers. If you take this, you will not see another one. Another part of this is that like, we really want you to have to think even at least a little bit about your augment decision. When you see, when you have built different and you see another built different top pop up, you don't even really need to look at the other two augments. You just take the second build different. And if you get a third one, you take the third build different. There's like no decision making there. And so we want to make sure that like, I mean, that's not like, that's not okay. And clearly it's also too strong. And so um, both from a philosophy perspective and like a balance perspective, we had to make this change, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, Cutthroat, the augment that made Assassin's Mana Reeve was not really fun if you got hit by it, not really fun for the person taking it, 
and not really fun period or good so it's gone uh no dead choice here cutthroats out of the game yeah uh some stuff we can talk about in the postmortem about like what this augment what we've learned about you know augments here um thinking about you know, what makes a good augment things like that cutthroat uh turns out doesn't cut it when you know the thing uh, your assassins are gonna kill the unit anyways mana reaving them doesn't help that much doesn't cut it huh doesn't cut it hey. hey i didn't even catch that that was not intended <laughs> uh you're i'm wearing off on you all right, uh, <laughs> Damn it. Dark Flight Crown. Uh, so this isn't listed as a nerf, although, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, it's kind of intended to be a nerf, right? Yes, uh, giving you the best item possible for your Dark Flight, you know, not as good. We want to give you an item that, like, you can use to sacrifice, but you don't need to sacrifice the item that we give you either. You can, you know, build towards an item to sacrifice when you get Dark Flight Crown. Yep, so bit of a change there. Uh, Double Trouble gets all of its stats lowered, and then also, like, Built Different, getting two of these was way too impactful. So you can no longer have multiple tiers of these either. Yep, same reasoning as build different. Cool. Uh, Gadget Expert, another really good augment. Again, if you get this at 2-1, it's already really powerful just because you're up a shiv. Like, that alone is already good. Tack on 25% bonus true damage. Whew. Uh, so bringing that down just a little bit. Honestly, this might be too minor of a nerf, but let's start small and see where it goes from here. Uh, Jade Crest. This is one that, uh, you know, talking to some players, finding out that really sometimes the silver one was as good, uh, if not better than the gold one, specifically because it was just plus one Jade and it was easier to get to ever since we changed it to a 357. Uh, so rather than have that be an issue, we just removed this for balance reasons. So the gold one is still there and it's about the level we want it. Um, but the silver one is no longer this like secretly OP silver augment. Yeah, uh, for technical reasons, we couldn't move the crest to gold and then take out the gold one. Um, but that might be something that we do in the future patch after we talk about it more. But um, basically, yeah, as more mentioned, you know, th this is the power of a gold sitting in a silver. Yep. Uh, Mage Crown, another augment that needs to be brought down just a little bit. Getting your tank right away, getting your Silas and being able to run three, if not five mage very early is very, very strong. Uh, we'd rather you have to work for that a little bit, so nerfing that by giving you a Lux instead. Yep, Silas in stage two. Oof, that was real good. Speaking of which, personal training, another augment that if you got it 2-1, also gave you a free Olaf, which gave you a free track to the very, very strong version of the Olaf Cobb. Again, we're looking at augments that decide the game at 2-1. We don't need that, so nerfing this by changing it to a Jax. Yeah. Um, initially, we wanted this to kind of give you the perfect setup for Olaf. Turns out that perfect setup leads to way high of a ceiling. And so if you get an Olaf out of box, man, you'll have a great game again. But then, you know, other, other than that, it, you don't need to be ramping personal training and Olaf stacks right off the bat. Yep. Uh, Portable Forge is another augment that continues to keep doing well. So we went through, looked at the items that were overperforming a bit and trying to bring them down just a tiny bit. Uh, Collector goes from 50 to 40. Infinity Force goes down another five stats crazy to think this used to be 33 and then zanya's is losing a bit of its ap all pretty minor nerfs but again just trying to bring that power down just a little bit yep cool uh preparation was an augment that honestly in the stats was probably lower than it should have been because it was very hard to play uh, a lot of people really didn't know how to play it those who did definitely swore by it that it was very good so we're making it easier to play in that all champs will now start at one stack so you only have to build up plus three stacks um, you know, you can do that right away, but the total cap is lower. Uh, so at all levels, it got nerfed on the HP, AD, and AP. So the total power it gives you has gone down. So should, again, easier to play, total less power. Yep. And to clarify, you will still go up to four stacks. Just all units will now have that circle in the, in, immediately as you buy them. Um, you get some immediate value right away, similar to things like uh, combat training, um, so that you, you know, when you get it, you don't feel bad and you have to like wait a bunch of time and, you know, players don't want to do that kind of investment, that kind of thing. Um, but the augment was definitely overperforming when played optimally. You'll laugh, Kent, but we were testing this on PBE this weekend and we did find that now you can give your jade idols and target dummies one stack of preparation. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. That, that, that extra AD. Woo. Uh, all right. Scope weapons two. This is an augment that honestly, there's a world where this might just need to be removed, but for now we still want to tempt that fade a little bit because it's very fun and opens up some really fun builds. 
So for now, we're gonna just take out that 10% extra AS, see how that works out. Um, clearly it's good on you know the Warriors, um, but for now we'll see if that, that change can get it to where it's supposed to be. Yeah, this is one of the augments that's like super transformative, really fun um, in the right bills, that kind of thing. And so we we want to try to get it to the right spot. We're uh, you know once we pull this out, the levers are not as great anymore. There are some other changes we can make, but um, I think we're in a good spot to get this to a good spot. <laughs> and then finally, uh, think fast on two one. Uh, basically, with astral in particular, just a little too good. And by a little too good, I mean way too good. Uh, the ability to have three star Skarner, three star Nidalee, and two star Vlad at two one, uh, even higher if you got a gold start, like, woo. Uh, and then from there you snowball because every turn you're getting like four gold worth of value. It was just too much. Uh, again, really trying to prevent these cases where whoever gets things fast at two ones wins worlds. Gonna take that out for now. So. Yep. With all these augment changes, um, the goal is definitely to make the two one augment choice like matter more. And also, you know, you take it, you don't, you don't just start thinking like, yep, this is the top two. Uh, they should never feel that way basically. And so, um, a bunch of these changes are targeting two one power, bringing down the top, um, bringing up some of the bottom. Yep. Cool. Uh, on the small side, uh, assassin four just really hasn't been worth it. You're willing to run assassin two for something like Rengar, but assassin four never really worth the spike. Slight buff to Assassin 4 to kind of make you play that. Uh, Cannoneer, same thing. Cannoneer 4 had kind of fallen off a little bit. So slight buff to Cannoneer 4. Just Cannoneer 4, not 6, not 2. Uh, Dark Flight 8, overperforming. Uh, you know, it is a chase trait that requires two emblems, but it was still just a little good. Still going to keep it good, just 200 less health. And then finally, I think this change isn't going to do a whole lot, but Guardian 6 and Guardian 8... Just a slight buff to try to make them a little bit more worth considering in that rare case you get that electric game with, uh, you know, electrocute or something like that. Um, maybe consider that as an option, but very slight buff there. Yep. For assassins, we want to tempt you to play four assassins rather than always playing like two Rengars or something like that. Um, you know, if you hit um uh items for nila and items for kiana who can actually be pretty good at the three star um that kind of thing maybe you'll consider playing four assassin uh for cannoneer we're buffing four we're also buffing nomzi cannoneer version and so we're um hoping that the cannoneer version becomes a solid comp you can go four you can go six should all be pretty good with the right items um and then for guardian similar to rage wing where it's like in the right setup this can be good um won't always be a comp that you'll want to play it won't be something that you chase every game that kind of thing but if you have you know heroic presence you know, electrocute those kinds of things uh you can consider playing um vertical guardian and it should be stronger now cool all right on the small side uh ezreal 3 getting a buff so that ezreal 3 can bit be a bit more of a champion nasus 3 getting a bit more of a buff so he can be more of a champion here's a secret it still won't be nasus 3 i tried this this doesn't work uh, Wukong 3, getting a bit of a buff. Um, maybe something can work there. And then finally, Karma 3. I think Karma 3 has definitely been one of the more lower elo punishers this meta. Uh, shocking, a Dragon Mancer causing problems. Um, so we're lowering Karma just a little bit. It's a very small nerf. Honestly, Karma will probably still be good, especially at lower elos. Uh, but some slight changes there. Yeah, Karma dominating a little bit too hard. We want reroll comps to be viable. We want Karma to be a decent carry, um, but uh, just too good right now once people have figure, figured out the optimal play style and build around her. Um, Nasus, you know, you, you you say Nasus is not, three is not going to be a thing, but, you know, we buffed Guardian. Uh, we buffed uh, Volibear. Well, I tried it this weekend. You know, I tried it. It, just, Nasus it, it three. did not work. It did not work. <laughs> I mean, don't all get me right. wrong. I still got third that game, you know, PBE lobby and all, but, like, it's fun. It just obviously falls off the back line that he can't get to. You know? I like how you say you got third, but it doesn't work. I mean, it's PBE. These are soft lobbies. <laughs> Come on. You're, again, All right, now the new, you're not the new challenge. see NASA's three win worlds. Okay, we're not going to see NASA's three win worlds, but, <laughs> but now the new challenge is to see who can pull off NASA's three carry and then get a first. Yep, yep. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Kaisa three, very small buff. Um, open that up, hopefully make it more of an option compared to, say, Karma. Um, just make Kaisa a little bit better. Lilia 3, same thing. Little bit of a buff here to make Lilia 3 a little good. This combined with the Cavalier buff, maybe we see some Lilia 3 start to be meta. 
And then probably one of the riskier changes, I mean, it's small, so it's probably not that risky, but a very, very slight buff to Lux 2 and then Lux 3 uh, to hopefully help the Astral Vertical a little bit, um, be a little bit stronger there. So very slight buff to Lux. Yeah, the Lux changes are in conjunction with a uh, Zoe nerf, Soam nerf, and a Mage Namzi nerf. So uh, it, it's it's risky because you know Lux can be good in the right scenarios, but this just uh, compensates for that, and also just will overall make her a little bit easier to play in the Astral version. Um, Kaisa, you know, Kaisa too, obviously good, especially in Shimmer Scale. Uh, Dragon Master getting you to high high uh, high gold counts, um, but you never really go three star, and so the three star version here should be more of a chase. Kaisa should be a very exciting ramp unit, and we want to make sure she hits that um lilia let it be known that i did not put in these ner these buffs um well kind of i put them in but like uh they, they were more want more uh -huh, to uh -huh. thought we should do this right. um but yeah lilia uh -huh. three can work in extremely specific scenarios this will make it a little bit easier um and you know even in those specific scenarios you won't be ending fourth anymore maybe you'll get you know third second I, lilia can work i expect you to be challenger by next weekend 2020 <laughs> Lilia. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm, I'm only doing this so that I can hit <laughs> Challenger. Right. <laughs> uh, moving on, Nunu. In a post-True Damage world, Nunu is quite bad. Uh, so we're buffing Nunu 3. Don't worry. He'll still be bad, is my opinion here. I don't think this is the resurgence of Dragon Mancer Nunu. He still gets stuck on Frontline that has Gargoyle, Stoneplate, and Dragon Claw. Um, but this should just make him a little bit better. I, I don't think this changes much. Uh, same with Recon 3. If you can get Recon 3, at least you're going to get some really big shields. Does that matter that much? Not really, but it's a bigger number. Should try that out. Seraphine 3 gets a bit of a small nerf. Um, you know, does she need it? Question mark. But Seraphine 3 is a very big jump up, especially with her interactions with Grave and Pantheon. Um, so just bringing this down a little bit so it's not quite as big of a jump. And then Silas 3 was a champion that didn't really feel worth 3-starring. Uh, this big shield jump should actually be a pretty big buff. Um, so I do think Silas 3, if you can hit it, will be very, very good as a tank for the mage comp. Yeah, we need to make sure that Silas was worth it. And Silas and both Silas and Rakan are worth it as tanks. Um, Rakan hits 3-star, and it's like not that exciting you you kind of expect him to be immune th throughout you know the four seconds of the shielding he has but right now it doesn't really feel like it and so we're giving a lot like uh, a big buff to that shield so that he basically feels immune for those four seconds while he's taunting everybody and it should feel like that because he costs 27 gold um uh, for Seraphine, in, in data, she's still overperforming. She also kind of like doesn't really fit our frameworks for how much spell damage she did. I can't believe this used to be 100. Um, so uh, just bring her down just a little bit. Um, she's already kind of more specific to play, but um, when you hit her three star and have good items on her, she's still like dealing out so much damage in addition to her shielding. Yep. All right. Uh, Graves three, one of the better three stars, nerfed. Uh, Hecarim three, one of the worst three stars, buffed. Jace 3, one of the worst 3 stars, buffed. Neela 3, one of the better ones, nerfed. Hooray! Yep. Uh, Neela's base damage was so high, but yeah, nerfed. She, she was certainly assassinating things at that number. Yes. Cool. Uh, Shioyu 3, one of the better ones, which I find interesting. I, this is one I'll be curious to see if, like, once the Soifen comp goes down, if it'll actually still be as oppressive as it was before, but... We'll see for now. Nerfed. Uh, Zaya, another one that was underperforming at three star. I think long time joke between challengers was that three stars, three star Zaya and two star Zaya, no diff, but hopefully this helps that. And then finally, Swain. This is not a three star buff. This is actually a buff to Swain, letting Swain do a bit more damage, uh, making up for the Rengar nerfs, uh, and just making Swain hopefully a better champion. I think this actually finally puts Swain at like. Swain's in a really good spot for as big a spot as a drain tank can be. Um, I think Dark Flight Essence Swains are really, really threatening, applying that Morellos and then being tough to kill. If you don't have any burst, he's really tough to kill. So, Yeah, I think for uh, reasoning on the Shio like spell damage reduction specifically, um, is Shio does a lot of damage. The damage goes up a ton at three star, but she doesn't also need to be unkillable while doing that, especially if you have like a BT or something. And so um, giving other dragons a window, you know, if you hit like a Deja three or something like that, you should be able to kill a Shio U three. That matchup is just not really fair, um, that kind of thing. And so bringing that down at three star, that's why we're doing that. And then Zaya, it just 
get stuck on Terra's. Now she will not get stuck on Terra's or Hopefully. will get stuck on Terra's a little less. Yeah, they'll say maybe a little less. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Shivana 3, probably secretly the worst three star five cost at the current tal values we'd printed. Now the dive bomb actually does a ton of damage and stuns for 10 seconds. So as long as you can get that Shivana the cast, you should be okay. Um, yeah, I still, I mean, she still has the problem of she has to cast, and so she might lose to like a Soraka or a Terra, um, but that makes her quite a bit better. Uh, Terra gets a bit of a nerf at three star, so that you know she might actually have to wait for the second pulse of her spell. Oh no, uh, she'll still delete boards, and then Zoe getting a bit of a buff as well, going from 500 armor in MR to a thousand. And the bigger one here, I think this one actually matters, is the Janna attack speed buff duration now lasts the whole fight at three star. So if you can get a Janna tornado off, your team is now at 5.0 attack speed for the rest of the fight. So, uh, Yeah, also these are both in the large section and in the small section because um, these are just specific three star changes. Um, one other thing for the Terra, we made the slams a little bit more satisfying because right now Terra slams the ground everything just dies. Both sides are like, okay, well, that was a big boom. But now it's like, boom, boom, big boom. And so it'll be um, backlit a little bit more. You have some more time to hopefully burn through Terra. It's not going to happen. If you hit three-star Terra, you're probably going to win the game unless you're against like a Soraka or something. And then, I mean, same with Zoe and Shivana. Like, if you hit these units and you're not against another five-cost three-star, um, you should have a very good time. Cool. All right. Uh, big friend. I think this is one that actually secretly ended up in the small section but could be considered big basically we're just raising the health requirement uh too many things were just kind of hitting this for free um so now you actually have to have something that is kind of high health um so a bit of a nerf there binary airdrop no longer offered if you have two plus dark flight they don't interact so rather than letting that confusing interaction happen we'll just not let it happen uh dragon imperialist is now blacklisted from double trouble dragon soul and woodland charm and vice versa these were the very confusing interactions where it's like, it says one dragon, but you had two of the same dragon. Those are still two dragons, not two dragon the trait. A little confusing. Uh, Knife's Edge 3 gets a 5 AD nerf. Mystic Soul now no longer offered on 2-1. Still a good augment, just not at 2-1. And then Soul Siphon is also an augment that takes a lot of setup. Not really great for 2-1. Um, so taking that out of 2-1. Yeah, th those are two that like were bad on two one, but you know they can be good later, and so we don't want to like doom you at two one to make you like suffer all of stage two, especially with like Mystic Soul, which is a prismatic augment. That's going to be a lot of power that you're down um, on stage two. Uh, for Big Friend, you know, in a set where a lot of things have a lot of health, um, it was way too easy to hit sixteen fifty. So just bring that up, um, and then yeah, that's it. And then finally, some bug fixes. Uh, Zyra will now pick randomly between rows that are tied rather than always choosing the farthest row. I think this one really infuriated players, so seeing that fixed is nice. Uh, Jace no longer fails to gain his uh, armor and MR if his initial cast miss. So now when he transforms, he'll always get that armor and MR. Uh, Shivana now no longer bugs out if you give her RFC or scoped weapons. So that's a nice bug fix. Uh, we fixed a typo in Jax's tooltip. And then finally, we had to revert a change that uh, Cannoneer wasn't working with Celestial Blessing, but fixing that bug caused a really awkward interaction with Whispers that allowed Graves to get up to like 1,000 AD and 1,000 AP. and It, way too, it was very bad. Uh, so unfortunately, we had to revert that bug to make sure that that interaction doesn't happen anymore. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yep, so Celestial Blessing won't work with the Cannon or Cannon Shot anymore, and the, we're going to look at ways to see if we can do something about this uh, at a future patch, but for this patch, um, that interaction won't work. Uh, for Zyra, it, it was always farthest row in some fights, always nearest row in some fights, so yeah, uh, this was thanks to the Challenger players for like you know showing us uh, clips to make this fix. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, Shivana, one more thing, just basically, she won't always cast, because if she's going to miss, there's no point in casting, but as long as anyone can be hit by the flame breath, she'll cast. Cool. All right, and that's it for this patch. So, again, hopefully with this patch, we end up in a slightly better meta. As always, kind of chasing the perfect meta. We're nearing the end of the set. Can you believe it? It's like this patch, next patch is the world's patch, and then the patch after that is the for fun patch. So, it's pretty crazy. Woo! already already almost at set eight yep so cool all right uh hopefully this leads to some really cool 
competitive scenes. Uh, let us know how it goes. Keep an eye on it. Admittedly, I'm other than my streams mostly disconnected. Like, I'm trying to finish my battle pass so I can get my my cool arena at the end. And then, you know, I'm kind of in set eight land and you know how much work we have to do with that. So, yeah. Yeah. That new, that arena, I'm, I'm chasing that too. That arena is so nice. I'm, no ad here. I'm just like, I want that arena. I know. I know. I got to finish yeah. it. So. Um, but, but yeah, we're, we're hoping that, you know, this opens up even more strategies. We're bringing down some of the top comps that we're seeing. So if in, um, guild, that kind of stuff, uh, this patch to allow other things to shine, we hopefully by removing front to back, um, or nerfing front to back, sorry, nerfing, skip the front line. We <laughs> bring back front to back backliners, um, and let, you know, like Zaya and let them, you know, continue to counter some of the other comps. I uh, just have a lot more variety in the meta and then having these reroll comps, of course, you know, in the lobby, if you have a couple rerollers, you guys can all help each other out with the pool and then hit these great reroll comps and um, shine that. there. We'll see you Don't on the that. rift with Lilia reroll. Oh God. So what you're saying is the backliners that skip the front line are going to be moved to the back so that the backliners oh. that go to the front can be in the front with the backliners. It's late, it's Mort. I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> all right well on that note hopefully y'all enjoy the patch let us know how it goes it's monday night now it goes starts going live at different regions tomorrow all the way to wednesday so yeah all right that's gonna do it from us until next time take it easy see ya